Racing, episode 22, The Double Deuce. You know The Double Deuce. Roadhouse. Roadhouse. <laughs> <laughs> With me, as always, is Filthy Rich. Filthy Rich, how you doing this week? LeBron James, 14-0 and 0 in the first round. Go Lakers! And we got to mute right away. All right, good shot. Good. <laughs> you lasted as long as it could, didn't you, buddy? All right. Also with us is the judge, Jimmy James. Oh, judge, how you doing? I'm good today. I'm good today for 22, 22 episodes. I'm good today. Double deuce. All right, well, let's take Filthy Rich off of this thing here. Let's see if he doesn't say anything about the Yankees. And we're good. Okay, we're good. <laughs> Lots of news to get to today, boys. And we also are debuting a new segment today, as promised uh, last week. So I'm looking forward to that. But uh, you guys ready to get just jump right into the news? Ring that bell. All right, let's ring it. <laughs> Bruising news. First thing we got to do every show, since the name of the show is Bruising News, is pop a brew. Because, gentlemen, cheers. Cheers. All right, first bit of news we're going to get to. Uh, the WBO has announced that Sean Porter is now the number one ranked welterweight setting up a mandatory for Terrence Crawford's world title. Or maybe Kell Brook's world title. But still, they've uh, set that up. Uh, Judge, since you're a Terrence Crawford super fan, what do you think about uh, him having to fight Sean Porter? And should he fight Sean Porter first? Or should he fight Kell Brook first? Or should he fight them both? What do you think? Oh, just throwing out both up there, huh? Yeah, throwing both I'm... at the same time, you know? He's that good, right? <laughs> can, you said he can fight right and left-handed. He can fight both of them at the same true. time. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, if we're talking about better quality of fighter, to my opinion, I believe Porter is the better fighter. I think he should fight Porter. Porter is the guy that you got to beat in this division that is heavily stacked. And it seems like He'll fight anybody for pretty much anything because he don't care because he is hard. And I think that's, that's, that right there is going to be a fight that will show what he can do because I don't think it's a style he's really used to either. So I think I, that's what I want to see because Porter, Porter messes up everybody. And, it's, and I, that's what I want to see. Shut up some of these people that are uh, dissing on Bud, in my opinion. <laughs> Well, you sound a lot smarter with that brand new microphone in front of you there. You, it sounds professional. Makes me want to think that Terrence Crawford might win one of these fights. I mean, he won't, but uh, it makes me think that maybe he will. Filthy Rich, what do you think about that uh, WBO announcing Sean Porter, number one rank for Terrence Crawford's soon to be Cal Brooks world title? So, uh, so let, let's start with this WBO ranking stuff. Why isn't Spence the number one guy? These little ranking things are just, they're a joke. So please stop WBO with your rankings. Let us rank this stuff. I think we do a better job than the WBO. Right. Now, who do I want to see him fight? Uh, I think I would prefer a Porter fight because – they are closer to the same weight class. Uh, they were both at 140 roughly at the same time when Porter fought Adrian Broner. Uh, I think Kell Brook is too big for – I know we went over this last week. I think Kell Brook is too big for Crawford. I think Crawford can beat both guys. I think both guys can beat Crawford. This is a win-win for the fans. I want to say shout-out to my friend Shane from Nebraska. Huge – Terrence Crawford fan. Ooh, I like him already. I like him already. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Uh, well, if he's a huge Terrence Crawford fan, maybe he should come up here and James will take him fishing, you know? No. <laughs> no, all right. <laughs> I don't know. The show. Uh, nice to meet you, man. Spread it to all your boxing friends down there. Uh, if you're a Terrence Crawford fan, we uh, do talk a lot about him. Uh, you and Judge would probably get along great. So uh, do you think uh, we'll take a quick vote on that? Real fast, uh, well, we don't have to take a vote on it because we already know what you're going to say, James. But Terrence Crawford versus Sean Porter, who wins that fight, Rich? Oh, man. You know, this new Porter I'm not a big fan of. I like the 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 bull charging style. The, the Rocky Balboa style? The classic Porter, I think, could at least create more problems for Crawford. I think this Crawford that or this uh, Porter that we saw against Formella was it two weeks ago or whatever it was? 
Uh, that Porter doesn't create much problems for Crawford. I think Crawford can win that fight. Yeah, I think we have to go with unanimous here too. I give Crawford that uh, by decision. I think Porter wins probably four or five rounds, but uh, Crawford wins that one by decision. I don't. I still don't think he beats Kell Brook. I think he's knocked out by Kell Brook, but. We already talked about that. Before. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm saying Porter played down to his opponent in his last one. I don't believe that he's going to come out and do the same thing. He's he's going to come out hard like he did against Spence. That's a good point. It is a good point. He does seem to play down to his opponents a little bit. All right, boys, let's move on to the next bit of news here. Um, the big the big news nationally, at least, uh, for the common fight fan, they, they know the, the name Canelo Alvarez, Tecate, Bibolda. Bibolda. <laughs> He, he said he might sit out all of 2020 because him and DAZN are having uh, are, are fighting about his guarantee. DAZN apparently doesn't like who he's deciding to fight and don't want to pay him the money, uh, mainly because he didn't have another Triple G fight. And I hear even Golden Boy is talking about pulling out of DAZN as well. Uh, what do you guys think about this? Uh, this is going to be big news. Uh, is Alvarez really going to sit out? Is he going to switch promotions? Is he... Is ESPN going to jump in, HBO, or what are we going to go here? What do you think? Starting with you, Rich. I think Canelo needs to fight. I don't know what the contract inner workings are. I don't want to interfere with someone else's money, but Canelo needs to fight. I don't know how they make these fights happen with COVID-19 going around. I don't even know. I think his uh, his contract was inflated to begin with, so – uh, DAZN screwed this one up. They screwed themselves up. Uh, now it's kind of time to pay the piper. But C- Canelo, if y- he has to fight, and he's not going to be able to make the money that this overblown contract guaranteed to begin with. So they need to just renegotiate this whole thing and work something out. Yeah, I mean – the zone's bleeding money out. Apparently they're losing a lot of money and they just can't afford to pay them. I think they're leaning on the excuse of, well, you're not fighting anybody. So, I mean, you're not fighting anybody that we want to promote or anything like that. I think the whole reason the zone signed them was for the triple G rematch. Wasn't it? No, he's a big name, man. He's an yeah, upcoming he's star. He was I think like, that was the big fight the zone was looking for. He's looking for, he fights everyone, man. He fought Mayweather before he fought triple G. He is, he is, Fights whoever, whenever. Caesar Salad. That was a big name before it became, you know, full of Caesar Salad. He's coming back, I mean, right? You know, <laughs> we ain't talking about that. But, but yeah, man, he, Canelo fights anybody, so he's going to come up. Yeah, that's why they signed him. Big draw. Yeah. yeah, well, apparently not a big enough draw for the money that they got because he's not fighting anybody that they can apparently sell uh, on the zone anyway. But if they lose Golden Boy, too. They lose a lot more than just Canelo there, too. I mean, they would probably lose Oscars – Comeback fight. That's probably going to be, uh, you know, that, hey, laugh all you want, but that's still probably going to be a big money fight you know, <laughs> regardless. It ain't no, it ain't no, <laughs> no, you're crazy. Look, I'm look, crazy. Look, look, They're going to, if Golden Boy pulls out and they're not fighting. Golden out, Boy, no. yes. You're talking about <laughs> Oscar's fight is not a big money fight. That's what I'm laughing you're at. You're telling right me now. the common fan, the common boxing fan, just the common fans not going to tune in and watch Oscar De La Hoya's comeback fight? How much is that pay-per-view? And that'll answer your question. 50 bucks? I don't know. You, you'll, you'll have to find out. Put up a poll! <laughs> <laughs> There's still other good Golden Boy fighters, though, too. I mean, that they're going to lose out on if Golden Boy pulls out. So Fair enough. So, I mean, but that's still one that they would lose out on. I'm just pointing that out. You have anything to say about that, uh, Judge, about Canelo, uh, your boy? Oh, oh, oh. not my boy nor my beer <laughs> neither of those are correct but yeah you're uh, the same taste in beer right? oh, i remember you no, I, that a few episodes no. back man. yeah that's pun- <laughs> it's called a punishment <laughs> punishment um yeah i got two things uh he's supposed to get 35 million dollars per fight that's the guaranteed money they offered him 17 million um so they cut it in half. I think that's a pretty yeah. damn good amount, especially considering the circumstances. When you know most people are just going, "No, I'm not fighting," and getting. Boop. Um, also, in his contract, he's supposed to fight one, whatever the hell this means, but one premier opponent uh, every year. So right. he's supposed to have two fights a year. He's supposed to one of those fights is supposed to be a premier opponent. 
obviously who we just signed against. I can't even remember the guy's name anymore. Um, just put it in there. Tin can. Um, <laughs> uh, that's going to put that at jeopardy because then what is he going to do? Fight in a month later? This ain't, this ain't 1920s boxing, you know? That stuff doesn't happen anymore. So, I, personally, I think uh, Giselle is just going to miss out on a lot of money. I don't know why Canelo wouldn't be fighting. I mean, fight Callum Smith. I, what the, just fight somebody, man. Like, just do it. I don't know why he's, I don't know, really don't know why he's backing out, man, because he's supposed to fight BJS um, back before all this happened. And that would have been, I would have paid for that fight in a heartbeat. Yeah. No problem. But I don't know. I, I think he's got to just man up and do it, man. 17 mil is 17 mil. <laughs> I mean, I buy a lot of. Never mind. <laughs> that BJS fight was supposed to be back in March, wasn't it? Mm. I, I don't know, but let's let's remember. Just like you said, Canelo's a fighter. Uh, this might be Golden Boy interfering, where Canelo's like, "Look, I will take the seventeen million and someone in Golden Boy saying, "No, we're not settling for seventeen. You're getting your thirty-five or whatever Oscar. it is." Because the and it could be Oscar. So he signed a. a 10 year or 10 fight 365 million dollar deal so i remember mayweather said i make that in one fight and it's taking you 10 fights to do what i it, which is fine which is kind of funny to troll canelo the rest of his career yeah um, he likes canelo i thought but this was this had nothing to do with uh uh Golovkin, because Golovkin was still on hbo boxing Golovkin was gonna so he was set to become a free agent when uh, HBO went off, HBO boxing went off the air and it was between the PBC and going to the zone. So we don't really know why. I mean, Canelo's a big name fighter. So they were going to sign the biggest name they could. They also have Anthony Joshua over in the zone. I don't know what Joshua's uh, contract is, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's affordable where they, they just, and they, again, they screwed themselves over. They have no one to blame but themselves, but let's not get let's not think that Canelo's not willing to fight for seventeen million. It could be somebody else in his ear or making these decisions. Which I mean, there's a reason why Ryan Garcia wants out of Golden Boy. Canelo may want out as well. Yeah, maybe yeah. they're just making room for, uh, and maybe Golden Boy be clearing out, and they're just making room for Amir Khan. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be the big game. He'll fight for 17 million on the zone. He'll fight 17 million against. Uh, he'll train on Saturday. He'll fight a punching bag for 17 million. Yeah, yeah. Amir Khan versus a there. tiger. There we go. <laughs> oh man! But you also got to remember that the zone was just starting their network too when they signed Canelo. That was the big draw to get right. people subscribed to their game. So, and that's when HBO was closing up too, right? I don't think we knew that yet. I think HBO was still running. DAZN was going to just try to fight against that, against Showtime and, and all that stuff. And it, yeah, I don't know. Man. Well, I think the main reason DAZN signed Triple G, though, is to get that Canelo Triple G fight. I mean, you're not going to sign Triple G for that kind of big money to have him, you know, fight people that you don't, don't know. That's fair, but he was a big name at the time, too. So, I mean, he was, but he's, he was still getting up there in age. It wasn't a 10 fight deal with uh, Triple G. I think it was just a four fight deal with one of them being Canelo, I thought it was. So, I, I could have swore that's what I read back in the day. I got to remember I didn't research that part, but I should have. But I remember reading that uh, back when they signed Gennady, is that they were going to have Canelo fight him for a third time. And it just kept getting backed up and backed up and, and whatnot. And I don't think, when's the last time Golovkin fought? Was it? Oh. Jinko, was that the last fight that he fought? No, he fought a bum. Um, Steve Rolls? It might have been Rolls. <laughs> he rolled right over him. I don't know, man. You can know. look it up, but it's uh, he hasn't had a big fight in a while. It's uh, like that I said, Canelo, it's pretty depressing. Right? Canelo, well, Derevinchenko. Well, Derevinchenko at the yeah. time was wasn't a big name, but. And on the he's with the PBC anyways because yeah. the PBC was making a push for Golovkin because they have all the middleweights. That, well, they have uh, Jamal Charlo. They got both the Charlos. Derevinchenko is a big name. I can't even – like I'm drawing blanks right now, but uh, there, they had a real, a real reason to go after Golovkin. All the fights are over here at the PBC, but there's probably some truth where DAZN probably gave him the money and said, look, we're going to have to – put all, all our cards on the table, all our chips to the middle and hope that Golovkin uh, Canelo three is a big payout. 
Sure. And it's not going to be. We've not seen it, it. Not, the longer they wait, it's not. No, it doesn't matter. We've seen it twice. We didn't like either result. I don't want to see it a third time. Yeah. Go old timey rules, and they just fight until they can't go no more. No judges. You know, let's go that route. Triple G wins in round twenty four. <laughs> yeah, that's my prediction anyway. All right, boys, uh, we had some good fights last weekend. There's some good fights this weekend coming up too. Uh, just want to touch on a few of those. Uh, we got Herring uh, versus Oquendo. Richie, we got your guy, Jared Big Baby Anderson, fighting Rodney Hernandez. And then Ugas is fighting Ramos uh, this weekend. Which fights are you guys excited to see the most? And touch on all three of the fights. We'll start with the first one here uh, with Herring and Oquendo. Uh, James, what do you think of Herring versus Oquendo? Well, it is the third scheduled fight date between these two guys uh they were supposed to fight um what like two months ago and then somebody got covid and then they were supposed to fight like a couple weeks later after that happened or after that got back i think it was someone in his camp but then they're supposed to fight a couple weeks later and then that got uh canceled i don't remember the reason for that one and they finally set on this date again um so I mean, it's for a championship uh, for what the WBO. Um, I think that's probably one of the. There's the, the WBO belts. again. Yeah, I know they're all <laughs> over this show today. Um, but I mean, that's going to be a defense for Herring. Um, I don't know how excited I am for it. Um, I mean, personally, I think Aquendo is a little old um, for all this, but. I don't know, big, I mean, it's still a belt, it's still a fight. I'm not really that excited for it, but I'll probably watch it. Yeah, I'll watch it. I'll turn it on. It's not something I'm going to be like, oh, I have to set my alarm to watch, you know. <laughs> what do you think, uh, Rich, about uh, Herring and Oquendo? Yeah, I, I, the only thing to look forward to is, uh, like, uh, if Jamel Herring wins, that basically sets up the fight with uh, Carl Frampton. So this is supposed to be a cakewalk fight uh, against Okendo, but I don't, I don't think it's going to be that much of a cakewalk because I, I am not like, uh, I'm not big on Jamel Herring. I think he, he hasn't been tested. Uh, so I, what, I, I, mean, I hasn't been valid, valid tested. I just, well, <laughs> I, I, I just, I, this is, this is probably his biggest fight and maybe not his biggest fight, but uh this is, he's supposed to win this, and I don't know if he can. All that being said, he's supposed to win. Don't, uh, don't be surprised if there's controversy at the end because at the end of the day, uh, boxing federations want their money, and the way they make their money is by setting up a Carl Frampton fight. So that's what we're going to be looking for. For I'm not really too excited. Are you calling for the upset? I'm not, but I'm, oh. I, what I'm saying is don't be surprised if Okendo, it looks like visually Okendo wins, but Herring gets the nod. And being that there's no fans in there, no one's going to boo. So, I mean. I want you to remember what you said for later on. I just want to talk to you. I'm <laughs> just going to bring that up. Uh, but your guy, uh, Jared Big Baby Anderson, the real big baby, who should change his name, uh, is fighting Rodney Hernandez. What do you think of uh, your boy fighting this week? The undercard's probably better than the main event. Uh, it's a nothing fight. I mean, this is, this is a nothing fight. Uh, this is, it's, I mean, there's a reason it's an undercard. This is a nothing fight. Uh, and this is just to hone in on Anderson's skills to uh, make him a big name in the coming years. But uh, there should be no reason Anderson blows this fight. This is going to be a cakewalk. It's going to be a cakewalk, but it'll be fun to watch him. I mean, he's one of your future stars, right? He's the world's future star. <laughs> well, you are the world. Well, when it comes to boxing, you are the world. You are oh, the voice shucks. of the generation. Judge Jimmy James, what do you think of the uh, – the? Uh, you look a little offended that I called Richie the world, not you. You're also well, the world, too. Yeah. I'll, drink, <laughs> I'll drink to that. I'll drink to that. No, 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 no. I'm fine. I'm fine. No, I mean, that's – this is – I mean, this is definitely a, um, like a nothing fight. Ronnie Hernandez is just a – he's a, just a bum. I'm not a bum. Sorry for using that word. And he's just 13, nine and two. He don't, he don't well, excite me. For, that word. I know it. he's not, he's, he doesn't excite me as a fighter. All right. He's just, he's just not, I don't think he's going to do anything uh, against the real big baby Anderson. <laughs> true enough. True <laughs> enough. 
All right, well, if you don't like the fights on ESPN there, you should check out Big Baby fighting anyway just because he's a future star. But you can switch over to uh, Fox on the PBC and watch Ugas fight Ramos. What do you guys think of that fight? Judge, we'll start with you. That one, I think, is a better fight. Uh, I mean, Ugas is, what, 34? I thought he was younger than that. But, you know, some of these guys just uh, transcend age. But um, I think Ugas is going to win that fight. Um, I I still thought he (laughs) – I mean, I thought he beat Porter, to be honest. Um, Them so I don't think... ever know their age, dude. So. <laughs> it's true. Um, but, I mean, Ugas, I think this is going to be a good fight. I don't think it's going to be as – I don't think it's going to be as easy as, as uh, anyone might think. I think Ramos is going to – is definitely going to – definitely going to make it serious. But um, I, I still – I don't think Ugas has that much trouble. I, I think he'll, he'll win probably a later round knockdown is going to be my guess. He's kind of trying to get back on the on his feet after losing the Porter back in March of last year, right? Fought a couple guys and then lost. I think his last loss was the Porter, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was. What do you think, Rich, about uh, Ugas? Yeah, well, he beat Porter. He kicked Porter's butt, and that's a problem with these 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 judges and these organization stuff. The fight I saw, and yes, the record books show that Porter won that fight. But Porter's face says that Ugas won that fight. <laughs> I am I am an Ugas guy. You, <laughs> you guys know this. I'm an Ugas guy. I could probably put him at number one in the welterweights. I think he is the toughest opponent for anybody one? out there. At 147? What did Errol, Errol Spence agrees with me? I mean, so you guys oh. can take, take it up with him. <laughs> Errol Spence said if uh, Ugas had the publicity, if he was like an American, I'm paraphrasing now, but – uh, Ugas is one of the toughest fighters at 147. I think he could beat everybody. You at least have to, like, just like Porter. We talked about this last week where uh, Formella went the distance with Porter. How many people can say they did that? Ugas is another one of those guys who can say they did it. And, again, you watch that fight. I had him winning seven or eight rounds. I thought Porter lost that fight. I thought he got robbed. This is what we're going with. It. I, this is like Herring and Okendo. Uh, Herring has a big fight coming up. If he wins, he gets to fight Carl Frampton. Who does Ugas fight? It's just like you said. He lost to uh, to Porter, so he's trying to regain his footing in the division. It, nobody wants any of Ugas. Ugas is a beast. Uh, he, this is going to be a cakewalk fight. He's going to knock him out. I'm calling a knockout because you can't go 12 rounds anymore. Ugas needs to stamp, put his name on this division, knock this dude out, and bring on whoever is in his way because – uh, this guy is the real deal. Uh, your Dennis Ugas, the real wow. deal. Number one, though. Why not? Wow. Who can beat? Who can beat him? Errol Spence. Like <laughs> Errol, man. Hold on, hold on. Errol Spence went the distance, also with Porter. That was a close fight. I right. watched Ugas destroy Porter in uh in the distance. So uh, if we have the common opponents here, like they do in the NFL, we talked about uh-huh. this several weeks ago. I'm going to freeze soon, aren't I? No, no, I, I, no, I hope so. I, I love it. I love the, I love the energy. <laughs> yeah, Ugas, whoop, Ugas versus Terrence Crawford, then. I have Ugas winning. Ooh. Judge, you, you, would you be, as Terrence Crawford's super fan and agent, would you be scared of fighting Ugas? <laughs> yeah, I would be scared of fighting <laughs> Ugas, but I'm also scared of fighting Porter, man. These are good fighters. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's the point. You need to have some fear. You I'll need to have that. some fear. Yes. <laughs> uh, and I'm drinking apple cider, by the way. I'm a fraud. It's not brew, apparently. I bought some apple, hard apple cider. Apparently, it's, got the it's hard not, stuff in it, at least. You know, it's not, yeah. not brew. <laughs> I mean, but we made no. Judge drink it. <laughs> I do have a confession. I'm not drinking brew. I know it's brews and news. It's brews and boxing. I'm drinking hard apple cider. Come on. Well, it got you all fired up. So I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like. Hey, it. don't <laughs> touch <laughs> Ugas. <laughs> Ugas, like I don't want to play favorites. I don't want this guy to be my guy, and that's to be my guy. I like all <laughs> these guys. I'm trying to be. Uh, impartial and be call it as I see it and that's how I see it but I, I do like Ugas I like him as a fighter I think he brings excitement he puts his heart into it and you can you can tell someone with these foreign born fighters they don't get their fair shake in the United States look at the what Jim Lampley said during that Kovalev Ward fight it was three American judges on American soil uh 
American referee and the Russian got screwed. So uh, I'm not trying to play favorites for foreign fighters either, but well, this dude is really about- good. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. I mean, I just, I just don't want to like, uh, that's your boy. That's your boy. I like them all. I do. I even Canelo. I know it may sound like I don't, but I like Canelo and I like <laughs> Floyd and I like these guys. You know what? I'd like to see Ugas fight. I'd like to see Ugas fight Jamal James when they, when he has a chance to prepare for it. I'd like to see that rematch. That was a 34 day rest. Right. It was a last minute. Yeah. I think, I think that would be a good fight. I would still take Ugas to win. I like Jamal James. I think he's on the, uh, the B tier of uh, a bunch of A-list fighters, but he is, can go with them guys. Minnesota fighter just won a title last week and, uh, or is it two weeks ago? And, uh, you know, he, I think that's his only loss, right? Was to yeah, it was to Ugas, like 37-1, yeah. and one, I think, is his record. And he credited Ugas in saying, you know, that fight changed my career and the fact that it showed me, you know, how good these guys are. And it was on short notice, and I'd love to fight them again. I'd like to see them fight again. That'd be a great fight to watch. Make it happen, Raider Live. Make it happen. <laughs> what did you say? 27-1. and 27-1? and one. Yeah. Who? Wow. James? Jamal James. Yeah. I thought he was third. Wow. Okay. I believe yeah. you. What did you have Ugas on on your uh, Bruise and Boxing uh, – I had him at two. You had him at two. Yes, I had him at did. two. What'd you have, Matt James? Do you remember? You uh, remember? That was one I judged on the uh, oh, that was Decision a, that Show. Was the and I, think lost. I, actually, I think I knocked him some points for that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yep. That might be but a different Ugas story. On my list. <laughs> I, don't think, then, I don't think you knew who he was. But then I canceled <laughs> the show. I pulled the plug on the show. <laughs> <laughs> that might have been the last show. It might have been. You cut it. You cut it. You're out. It ended. I, it ended everything. I impeached the judge. <laughs> he kept the name, but uh, he no longer judges anymore. Now I control everything. Maybe my name should be the judge. <laughs> All right. I don't think so. Objection. <laughs> well, his name's the sauce. <laughs> the sauce. Bring the sauce back. <laughs> Roll a graphic. <laughs> I forgot the sauce. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Oh, thanks a lot, apple cider. <laughs> yeah. He just gets some apple cider and Richie, and, uh, and then he brings back everything from like months ago. That's great. <laughs> Bring him back the sauce. <laughs> what no, fighter was nicknamed the sauce? You guys remember? I which don't know, and we're never going to find out. <laughs> we talked about him. That was his name, his nickname. All right, uh, final thing on that. Uh, which fight are you guys looking forward to the most? Big Baby, Ugas, or Herring? I'm going with Ug. I'm going with Ugas. I want to see the Ugas fight. If both both fights are airing at the exact same time, and I have to choose one or the other, I think Ugas Ramos fight is better to begin with. But I also want to see Ugas knock this guy out. I want to see what the what's the future for him. We already know the future for Herring, and it's against uh, the British dude, Frampton. Frampton. And what do you think, James? Ugas, man. I mean, Herring Herring trains with. Uh... With Crawford, uh, and uh, you're still choosing Ugas and uh, Rob Brandt, another hometown boy, Oakdale. Yeah. Uh, but I, I'm Ugas. The, that's the fight. That's the fight that's going to have more pop. I think that's the fight that's going to have the pop. That's the one that you're going to ha- enjoy seeing the most. Hundred percent. I agree. Uh, Carl Frampton's uh, Irish, not British. My apologies to my our friends out there. Ooh. It's European, close enough. No, <laughs> they're gonna oh. find you. I apologize. Oh. Yeah, man. I'm. I have no. We're all part of the not... United Kingdom, right? Is Ireland part of the United uh, uh, Kingdom? Uh, yeah, yeah. All views and uh, things expressed <laughs> here are not unanimous. They are of uh, own opinions. Well, the unanimous decision is that we all agree that uh, Ugas Ramos is the best fight to watch this weekend. We all agree with that. So. All right, boys. Time to move on to our brand new segment. We promised it last week that we bust out a new segment on each show each week, or not a new segment, but just like one segment besides the news. And this week we actually have a new segment. So let's ring that bell on brews and reviews. <laughs> brews and reviews segment. We talk about a fight that just happened and uh, give our commentary on it. Now, if you follow us on Facebook, Raider Live, which I know a lot of you guys do, and I really appreciate that, but I really need you to subscribe on the YouTube page as well because that's where we actually get our thing. But if you're on the Raider Live page, you may have seen that uh, during the Ramirez Postal fight, uh, me and the judge actually watched the last two rounds with you and the decision. And you got some live look in at how we watch fights and how we think of fights. And uh, we both agreed that Postal got robbed. He won that fight. Um, I think he won that fight uh, a lot. I, 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 don't, I don't even say a draw. I think Postal won more rounds. Um, 
James, I, I don't know how many rounds you had him going. Rich, uh, you told us in pre-show that uh, you had it the other way. You were not as, as biased as Andre Ward was during that fight. But uh, you had Ramirez winning that fight. So let's talk about that a little bit. And also, I'm just going to plug, sometimes we are going to go live on Facebook. So you guys can watch us on there. When we go live, we'll talk about things. It's a lot of fun. It's still on there if you want to watch that. But uh, James, let's talk with you first about this, since you and me were the ones that were doing that live. Uh, about the Postal Ramirez fight. Yeah, um, I, I was I was excited for the fight um, because I know Postal uh, Postal is no slouch. Um, granted, he's old; he's older in this division for sure. Um, and but Ramirez is a champion. Days. <laughs> well, four hundred was it? Four hundred fifty nine days is his yep. last fight, or something but like Ramirez that. Ramirez hadn't is... fought in like. 380 days they didn't even say that yeah it was over a year i mean but postal it felt like he i don't know man he just came right out the grave i guess i i don't know but um yeah i mean watching the fight it at least to me you know postal came out um he had if, if you want to talk about like aggressor uh ramirez is the one standing in the middle of the ring postal was the one being the more defensive fighter but postal was hitting those one twos and that with jab. such consistency. That's what a one two is, with yeah. such consistency that I I just I just don't know how you could if you're he was hitting those fight they weren't big power shots, but they were effective technical shots. And he was you could watch Ramirez swing and miss on these giant shots and postal was just light on his feet like whoo Ole, no problem, man. And I, I just when I was watching it and then seeing Ward's scorecard, I was dumbfounded because I'm seeing a majority of these rounds are going. A majority, at least, of the early rounds to me were going to Postal. At least the first four um, rounds. And then you know Ward had it like seven to one at one time. Like right. Ramirez, like what fight are you watching, Ward? I know you've been retired for a while, but you need. I mean, you already need like helper glasses or something or what but i i don't know i i thought paul Stahl got robbed um 114 115 113 um and then what 116 112 there was a draw and then uh, yeah, i'm not i'm not too i mean the, the the scores i don't have too many issues with but man i me personally i thought postal was the the more effective fighter if we're talking about going down to points and that went the distance I, I, well postal that's worked that jab really well ramirez couldn't couldn't stop the jab i mean how many slow motion shots do you see of him just getting that one two combo right through the guard of ramirez he just couldn't stop it and then when postal postal was the one that got hurt a few times in this fight he did get hurt there was a couple times where it looked like he may have went down or it was going to go down but he escaped it you know he escaped I, it was around nine i think it was you may watch her like, ooh, he got hit hard there. He's got to survive this round because Ramirez can smell blood at that point. But he survived the round, and he came out the next round, and he just started lighting him up again just like it never happened, you know. So, Richie, you saw it the other way. I'm curious to think uh, or curious to hear uh, what you thought of that. Well, I didn't see this as a robbery. Uh, this was a very, very close fight. Uh, one way or another. No, there was no robbery. It was going to go one way or another. I could have even seen this as a draw. I'm done with you, Jimmy J. <laughs> um, Marir, Marir, <laughs> The cider has hit him. <laughs> ah, Marir, Marirez, Marir, ah, Mar Ramirez. Ramirez, if yes, you that's what are. <laughs> if you don't know. know if you don't know what I'm talking about right there, then you need to go watch that fight. The highlight of that fight was Timothy Bradley trying to say Ramirez. <laughs> that was the highlight of the fight. Timothy Bradley struggling to say Ramirez was the greatest. Ramirez, <laughs> ma Marira. Anyways, back to this fight. Look, <laughs> James, you know what I'm talking about. I, I, I remember it a little bit. Now, okay, it had the sound about, about very well. Oh, my goodness. When he kept stuttering over Marirez, I could <laughs> I couldn't even focus. Look, Postal won on the defensive end. I thought Ramirez won on the offensive end. Uh, I think Postal threw more punches. 
Yeah, fair enough, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Look back at Oscar De La Hoya versus Trinidad when uh, De La Hoya kept trying hey, to win don't. around and take one off. Win around, take one off. I think uh, that kind of happened in this fight. I, uh, Ramirez, the last four rounds looked like he was slowing down a bit. I thought that's when he should have hit the gas, and since he didn't, that was Postal's opportunity to win this fight, and even he didn't. I had Ramirez winning by, like, a round, and I'm the one who thought Postal was going to win last week. It was a close fight, wasn't a robbery. I just think when you balance out the two, uh, Ramirez looked like the busier fighter, uh, moved forward the entire fight. I would never thought that Postal looked like a threat. He just played defense really well. Well, Postal uh, never looked like a knockout threat, but he, he, he yep. he's not a knockout not, that's boxer. Not his that's style. the point. <laughs> you know, his style was to, to win on the points, and I thought he won enough rounds. I thought that's that's I thought what De La, that's what De La Hoya's style was against uh, Felix Trinidad, and he lost. And that's what happens. You want to win on points, you're gonna lose. You got to get out there, knock the opponent out. That's the way you win fights. Postal doesn't have that kind of power. Well, doesn't ma doesn't even sure matter. Mark Ramirez went forward that entire fight. The entire fight, Ramirez was the busier fighter. Uh, he didn't land as many, but he was throwing like it was nobody's business. But he threw, I, like 200 less than Postal did. Oh, man. <laughs> Here, here's what I would say. Freddie Roach has been known to not teach defense, but Postal played some hell. He played really good defense in that fight. I had Ramirez winning. You can't I, tell me that only offense wins the fight, man. How look at the end of Mayweather's career. There was no offense in that. You're again, all he does is just <laughs> what Postal was doing is what he was doing. Mayweather is like not a very good example. You have to give me a better example than Mayweather because, like, just, Mayweather's coddled in the United States, in Vegas. Uh, Mayweather has the connections to do what he does. But if you can point out another defensive fighter that can win the way Canelo, Canelo wins often. Canelo knocked out uh, Sergey Kovalev. He but beat he won up the both Triple G fights. I don't care about uh, – well, you can call it what you want, but he beat up Danny Jacobs too. Canelo goes out there and beats people up, and he knocks people out. Now, as far as Golovkin goes, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't, I don't remember that. I know Golovkin won the first one. I thought he won the second one. But but Golovkin as as, was the he, he was the aggressor in both fights. If you want to watch those, that was the same thing. The aggressor. That, yes, and I said the aggressor won. And I thought Golovkin won the first fight. And I thought uh, Ramirez was the aggressor. And I thought he won the second fight. Uh, fair enough. So you're proving my point for me. No. I will, I will drink to that. <laughs> no, Postal wins. Postal, Postal wins. He I'm telling that. you, man, it is tougher. It is tougher to do that. It is tougher to just make people miss like that. No problem. I'll even point this out. You see it when uh, we did it live. Postal thought he won that fight at the end, and Ramirez thought he lost that fight at the end. Because you could tell Ramirez looked sad. He looked defeated. He thought he lost that fight. Postal had his arms raised. He thought he won that fight. He was all good to go. He, you know, yeah, he had that little knot on his forehead. I think that happened early on, but not a lot. I of think damage. that was. I think that was accidental. Yeah, yeah that. That little mouse that he had up there. It was super high, man. Postal like thought he won here. the fight. Ramirez thought he lost the fight. You know what I think is accidental? You guys watched, accidentally watched the wrong fight because I don't know what you guys are talking about. Oh, I didn't think it was – I, I thought, he, I thought he got it from a uh, punch. I didn't think it was from a headbutt. Ah, it doesn't matter, man. <laughs> Ooh, Postal. Postal won, won that, that fight. Bitch. I think he won Postal that fight. won that fight. I may or may not have had ah. a financial interest in that fight as well, but I'm just saying Postal. Oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't. Mythical money. Mythical money. But that was fun. Actually, uh, that was a fun thing because uh, me and Judge were actually watching it outside in the backyard after our fantasy draft because we had a TV set up out there. We had a keg of beer that didn't get finished, so we just sat there with the keg of beer and watched that fight. And it was uh, that was kind of fun. It was really nice out, not buggy, and it was, uh, it was a good time. We sat on the live thing. Like, we need Rich here. We're, you know, Rich was working, I think. No, Rich was at home wondering why no one called him, but that's okay. Well, it's because you hate fantasy. And we were there for the fantasy draft. That's what. Look, we man. The <laughs> next time we got a Showtime boxing match, let's do it outside at your house, Rich. I'll, yeah. I'll, if it's if it's if it's a pay if it's a pay thing, then I'll pay for it. We'll do it outside in the side of your garage. Let's do it. Projector, you, what's up? 
Yeah, you guys are banned from coming to this house. Oh, I'll, come on! I'll drink to that. Wait a minute. I got your projector. If I'm banned, how am I going to give that back to you? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I don't hate <laughs> yeah. I didn't think that one through, did you? <gasps> no, I don't hate fantasy. I don't know where you came up with that. But... Man, that's just while our talks. I didn't get... do that. <laughs> for, for the fans watching, I didn't get the invite. So keep that in mind as they drink to that. You're always invited. You have an obviously open invite. To so the fans and- Fair no. enough, man. We did not touch. We did not reach out to Rich when this happened. It That's was a true. Spur of that the is true. Thing. But we did. This was because we I'm sorry, I don't think Rich. The fight started. <laughs> I'll drink to that. That was a filthy, filthy thing to do. Yeah, filthy. I'll and, drink to that. And it was because we were sitting outside. We were already drunk because we've been drinking all day. And then James goes, "Hey, we got the fight. The post all fights coming on in like ten minutes. Let's put that on the TV here." As we're sitting there after our draft, cleaning up. And we're like, well, yeah, we got the uh, we got a keg. Let's sit here and uh, and watch this fight. So we did it. And then he's like, why don't you try the live thing for once? So we tried that. I think it worked out pretty well. You can't see James very much in that. They but. don't matter. No one's easy to see my ugly mug. <laughs> next time, Rich. Next time on Showtime, your house. Let's watch it. That'll be oh, fun. I'll I'm sit in the that- street, man. Come on. I'm busy that night. <sighs> <laughs> That's terrible, man. Can I, can I, can I still come? <laughs> we'll figure. We'll figure. We'll figure something up. So tune into the Raider Live page. We'll probably do some live ones. Maybe we'll do some YouTube live ones as well. Um, uh, I have to figure out how to do that without the computer. I don't know if you can do a YouTube live on your phone. Uh, obviously, the quality is not as good as it is during our shows. But uh, look for that. More reasons to subscribe to the YouTube page and to the Facebook Live page. But the uh, the YouTube page is the most important to subscribe to. All right, everybody. Gentlemen, that was a great new segment. I hope you guys enjoyed it. The fans enjoyed it. Uh, brews and reviews. As I said, we're going to try to debut a segment every week after the news. It's not necessarily the same one, but uh, we'll have some new ones, some old ones. We'll do all our good stuff. Um, gentlemen, you have anything to close on? Any final thoughts? Rich, we'll start with you since you're all cidered up. <laughs> uh, legends, Chadwick Boseman, John Thompson. Drink to you, Wakanda forever. Hard to follow that one, Judge. Uh, I, I'm not going to, man. All right. All right, All right. All right, for Filthy Rich and Judge Jimmy James, I am Raider Live. Thank you all very much for joining us, and we will see you guys next week. <laughs> <laughs>